Long before the colonization of New England, native brook trout thrived in Connecticut's shallow, cool streams with gravel bottom. Due to factors like industrialization, climate change, pollution, and the creation of housing developments, the water conditions for these wild fish are rapidly changing. In this project, we will collect data on the wild brook trout populations of Connecticut to ensure that they will remain in our state for years to come. Here talking about a project that we've been, that's been underway and in the works for over three decades now. It started back in 1988 through 1995, when believe it or not, I was actually a summer employee on the project, surveying rivers and streams all across Connecticut, just about 1,000 locations, looking for uh, trout, particularly how much habitat was there and how well stock trout could do so that we could come up with a trout management plan for rivers and streams across Connecticut. Fast forward to two years ago, and we re revisited a random number of these sites, just over 100, to see if brook trout, particularly wild brook trout, were still present. And what we found was about 70% of our sites still had some wild brook trout present, but just about 35 to 38% did not. Even though looking upstream for me here, it may not look like things have changed, we have much greater development, the environment has changed a little bit, and we have more people in general living closer to our natural resources. So there's been quite a bit of change in Connecticut, and we want to see how that impacted our wild brook trout. So we're going back now, uh, this summer, to relook at the places that did not have those fish, just in case we missed them by chance, as well as surveying some of the smaller tributaries that drain directly down into where the original site was. And what we're finding out is we didn't really miss them a couple of years ago. The main stems still don't have wild brook trout present, but the tributary streams do. And our theory on that is that the main stems have warmed a bit over the, the past couple decades, and that these fish have moved into the colder tributaries to survive and deal, because brook trout are very um, temperature sensitive. They can only have summer temperatures in the mid 60s. They really don't like it too warm or too hot. And many of Connecticut's rivers and streams actually exceed that temperature in summer months. Water is 18.5. Conductivity is 419.2. Okay. I got one. There's another one in there somewhere. We have a white sucker, 21, green sunfish, wild brook trout. This one we're gonna measure is 14, 25. I'll come back to you later. 22, 8, 9. Eight, 15, long nose dace, tessellated darter, uh, Faxonius lamosus is a native crayfish called the spiny cheek. So this summer, 2021, we're back after COVID and we're resampling about 38 locations that we did not find brook trout three years ago, where we did find them 30 years ago. 
And then we are also doing small tributaries close to that main stem site to see if there are populations that feed down into that main stem. And what we're finding in general is that we didn't really miss anything. The fish are gone from the main stem sites, but there still are robust populations in one or more tributaries that feed down into the larger river. So there's still good hope for brook trout in Connecticut, and we look for conservation and preservation to keep this species sustainable for generations to come. Thanks for tuning in to another one of our great videos. Uh, appreciate your support. Tune in, subscribe, follow us, and always please remember that 100% of your fishing license investment goes to support programs like you've seen in these videos. It goes to help all fish in Connecticut for generations to come.